Like, I'm going to show these documents clearer because I've spoken through the last post a lot. So this relates to my great uncle, which is Leo Patrick Sayer, who we've always called Uncle Fred. And that's because he originally was Frederick Goff. I think his last name was Goff. It was um, Nan's grandmother's sister's son first. And then Nan's grandmother, which is um, Julia, adopted him. There's a lot of that in my family. So when I was a kid, nice stories. So I was very close. I mean, Uncle Fred passed away when I was in my 20s. Um, as I explained in the previous um, video that I've uploaded. So Uncle Fred's from Bellevue Hill. So was um, Mad Auntie May, which is May Goff, um, Nee Ryan, who um, is Nan's... Uh, and we called her Mad Auntie May because she was... Well, all her husbands died and um, she was very rich. Um, but her husbands were very rich and very old. And that was a story that went around that she killed all her husbands. And I used to say, Nan, did she? This is to Lola. And Nan goes, well, they were very rich and they all died. So um, one of the husbands, one of the sons, so they had Uncle Fred. When he died, um, Frederick Goff, she put him up for adoption. And her sister, Julia Sayer, adopted him, which is um, why he became my great-grandmother's brother. Okay? So... Julia Sayer was living in 43 Pub Street at the time, which is where she died. Um, that was the house that Uncle Fred owned. However, they're from Bellevue Hill. So, as you'll see, oh, and that's for, was it Customs House, whatever, in London, where he was living. So he was living in London, right through the war. They had what my nan used to call their accent. So, my big nan, Mary, and her brother, Leo Patrick Sayer, Uncle Fred, had what was called a plum in your mouth um that's what my nana lola used to call it their accent was what you call someone with a plummy in their mouth these are the documents so we're going to sleep uncle fred used to tell me these great stories of the war and one of them he did bring up when he was um they thought he was a spy anyway years later i got the documents and yeah they actually kind of did if you read through the letters so he was living when he was back home in sydney and was at his house in bellevue hill he was down at the base in Rose Bay, which I said in the previous one. And he was taking photos of the seaplane. And the government confiscated his camera because it was a military base. Okay. This is just down the road from here. As you can see, there's all the government documents. So I've actually requested the government documents and said, look, I was very close to my uncle growing up. And he used to give me a lot of documents and so forth growing up as well. I've already said this in the previous video. Um, Nan Lola used to do it. <laughs> she used to be, I, and I'm talking about when I'm a little kid. Oh, here, hang on to this. Keep, you got to keep it in a safe, sp safe space. Um, same with Big Nan, Mary, and Uncle Fred. So I've got so many documents through the family. Um, heritage history, I know more than anyone. So 33 Edgecliffe Road in Bellevue Hill is where Uncle Fred grew up. <coughs> Excuse me. I can't seem to shake this bloody flu. Um, excuse me. And um, he actually owned the house in 43 Piper Street, Leichhardt, which is the house that his sister, my great-grandmother, actually um, raised her family. Like my grandmother, Lola, was raised in 43 Piper Street, Leichhardt. And that house became one of the longest houses in our family um, because my nan sold that house in 1999. So growing up, I used to spend a lot of time at that house. Um, plus the fact is that I was extremely close to my great grandmother. Um, here we go. So Nan was on the truth. So here we go. These documents are even dated back here in the forties. And Nan said the house was in the family since the thirties. 43 Piper Street, Leichhardt. Now it is owned by, um, <clears throat> Uncle Fred. Uncle Fred left it to my Nan Lola, but I used to go there to visit my great grandmother, Mary. And I used to sit in the park across the road and draw the viaducts. I used to work on artwork in the park there and do the viaducts. And that, that's the park that my nan's sister, Mari, used to keep her racehorse in when they were younger. Now, there's government documents that back up what I'm saying to be the truth. So why would I be gaslighted? These people obviously are big scammers and they want to try and gaslight me. So this is all to do with Uncle Fred. Let me get to... And this talks about the camera. So um, on his... Um, Majesty's service it talks about the film being removed. Uncle Fred had to prove that he actually worked um, for the Navy. 
and um, to, you know, get his camera back. So these are the photos that was taken of Rose Bay down the road from where he lives. So I often get off the ferry in Rose Bay just to remember Uncle Fred and um, look around the Rose Bay and across the ocean remembering the photos that my great uncle took of this area. So there's a lot of heritage and history within the eastern suburbs and the inner city of Sydney to do with my nan's side of the family. There we go. This one here. Every time I come past here, every time I, I go get off the ferry and I look back this direction and it's just looking at this photo and thinking, wow, this is almost 100 years ago and I knew this uncle who took this photo very well right into my 20s. Well, it's, um, what is it, 80 years ago the photo was taken and I was very close to the man who took this photo, my great uncle. And I get off the ferry and I stare back at this direction thinking of the photo going, what a... What an honour to actually have been lucky enough to have all my greats in my life and to have all these stories that I've got documents from and to be in parts of Sydney where there's so much heritage of my family around these areas of Sydney where they are Indigenous to these areas of Sydney. So where you would say, these, where everyone talks about Indigenous, it's like, well, my family's Indigenous to these areas of Sydney. So we hold Indigenous to this fair, this area of Sydney. If you want to use the, those words that people throw around, well, we're Indigenous to these areas of Sydney. That's where my family heritage and history is from. Now, another thing I've also brought up too with other family documents. What's great with documents in Australia is that it actually has your job on your marriage certificates in those days, your birth certificates. So there's a lot of backing up of paper trail. I, I don't know, maybe plebitarians don't have this. Maybe it's people that, well, I look at people that say they have no family, like you know, there's no documents. Why? <laughs> because I know how many documents I've got for 100 years to back up my family. So plebitarians probably don't have documents. But um, so my mum's grandfather was a jockey and there's his wedding certificate. And my mum's grandmother was a seamstress, dressmaker. There we go. So jockey, dressmaker. All right. Um, I'll do this quickly because my battery's going to die, but the, um, you know, my nan gave me these documents years ago to, and said, you know, take these before my daughters get their hands on them. And I copied them. I wish I kept the originals. Um, so, and this is, there we go. Um, Matthew Joseph Ryan, see, uh, this is Julia's father and Julia's mother's Bridget Dufresne. So... I'm going to do this really quickly. Um, I've already spoken about this. I just want this to be under 10 minutes to upload. So I've given good details. Um, all of my nan's children, except for Marianne, are born in Darlinghurst and St. Margaret's Hospital because my grandparents were still living in the inner city. They were still in Roselle. My mother was about six or seven when they moved out of Roselle. Okay, so they're all from the inner city, my family. And a lot of fam there's still family alive in the inner city now, like mum's cousin, the um, police officer who's retired, which is um, Brian Keegan, um, little Brian, so Brian Jr. Um, you know, so they're still there, um, just that everyone's dead and moved on, basically. Like I said, like I was going to funerals in you know teenage years and people that I was still visiting in the inner city suburbs of Sydney. My family members were still living in Stratfield. They're still living in Lyonca. They're still living in Balmain. They're still living in Roselle. So my growing up life was spent in the city, like I kept telling people. It's like, but you keep focusing on where my mother moved to, but my life was growing up in the city. My mum worked in the city. My family's from the city. You know, my grandparents moved to the suburbs and we had land in the suburbs. But my life, as you can see here, was all city life. And, um, you know, is this the... Oh, yeah, here we go. So, like I said, like, he, even with my great uncle here, which I used to call, like I said, Matthew John, he was Uncle Jack, or though mum's cousin, um, Sharon Newcomb, said I used to call him Auntie Jack. He passed away in 1993, like I said. So, just before I was 14 years of age, and he's from Stratfield. Or he's living like it. so. We spend our life going visiting him in Stratfield. Um, you know, I've already given a long detailed list of my life and what I've done with my life. And people think that well, they think this ridiculous bullshit that isn't true. It's like I'm sorry, I grew up in the city. Just because we, I had, a, a, you know, a very different lifestyle to people because they stayed in one area. It's like no, we had a horse stud. 
we had this, we had land we, in areas. We had land in Sydney, we had swimming pool, we had equestrian horses. My grandfather had race horses. There's race horses in the family. There was, we had horses right through Sydney in my family, right through the inner city suburbs of Sydney. Mum um, was a paralegal. My dad, Mark Fleming, was a builder. Different side of the family have different things as well. My dad's parents are from the inner city suburbs of Sydney. My dad's mother, um, Ruby, she's from Jamoy uh, in Abbotsford. Dad's father's from Botany Bay. I've already explained this in detail, but you've got people that make up these stories because they imagine what my life was growing up. And I've corrected them so many times and said, no, it's not. And I don't know what you people are trying to scam, but the information you have isn't true. And if you don't want to listen to me, then how about I just back it up with documents instead? Because it's, I can just back it up with documents. Like, for example, mum's brother, the other brother who died before mum was born. Um, there we go. St. Margaret's Hospital, Darlinghurst. So there was um, Neil and there was Michael. Both mum's two older brothers died before she was born. Um, and there we go, uh, where they were from. So, yeah, okay, you don't want to believe me? Fine. How about I just, we just do everything through documents. So we do everything through a paper trial. I'll give you documents that says what I'm saying to be the truth and we'll rely on that. Here's the document. Because I'm not going to put up with being lied about, gaslighted, defamed, slandered, or have some idiots of people make up stories that they think they know me and it's like, you know nothing about me or my upbringing. At all. At all. And one of those little fucking pricks I want to see face court soon, and that's Mark Hanna. Oh, well, actually, there's a handful of pricks that all have issues. Bring the Jeffries, Mark Hanna, Stephanie Salas, some other little low-life scumbags. It's like, seriously? Mate, you don't know me. You involve yourself in my life since 2015. You picked the wrong person to do that too because, well... I'm not backing down from this. Like, oh, this, and why Mark Henner? Yeah. He made up some story about a joke that I said, like, so my mother's always worn a lot of hats. And that's known. I mean, we've come from a racing family. Jesus Christ. You know, going to the races all the time is what my family do. My mother has a lot of hats. She used to wear a shitload of mafia-style hats, I used to call them, um, when I was a kid, because they had little, little veils. There's photos of her in them. She's always worn hats. She looks great in them. Um, always going to balls, always going to racing industry. And there's a joke that my 